Hey guys, I'm back from Christmas break and I'm certainly glad I didn't miss any big news stories last week. Let me just turn on my phone really quickly and... Oh man, I need a vacation. Today we're talking about the wall, something that's currently doing a better job dividing this country than dividing any two countries. Today I'm here to tell you a different story that I'm hoping might explain why we don't already have a wall. I mean, if the Mexican-American war didn't get that thing up. Yes, today I'm focusing on the Department of the Interior, currently run by... nobody? President Trump says Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke is out by the end of the year. It is never a good sign when you're being investigated for so many ethics violations and crimes that someone has to go out and publish a guide to help sift through them all. At the time of departure, it was 17 investigations. That's enough to make even Giuliani say, you know what, maybe you should just plead guilty. So first, what does the Department of the Interior even do? I mean, America isn't exactly a small country. There's a lot of interior to cover. Well, it's the department in charge of managing federal lands, like national parks, and land the federal government needs to own to build structures on. Say, for example, a border wall. There are two large problems that the Department of the Interior needs to solve before building a border wall. First, establishing where the border is going to be, and second, overcoming private land ownership. First, because it might have sounded the weirdest, we have to find out where the border is, a problem I feel like we solved when we invented a map. This problem specifically relates to the Rio Grande River, which, before you write that off as a small problem, the Rio Grande River makes up maybe a third of our border with Mexico. So what's the problem? The Texas border region is not conducive to large-scale construction, and even President Trump a renowned builder himself, admits you can't put a wall through a river. As Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke infamously said, the Rio Grande, which side of the river are you going to put the wall? We're not going to put it on our side and cede the river to Mexico, and we're probably not going to put it in the middle of the river. So it kind of seems like you want to build the United States border wall in Mexico. He later responded though by saying, whoa, I never said this should be built in Mexico. And he's right. He simply said we're not going to build a wall on the American side of the river or in the middle of the river where the legal border is. And we're definitely going to build a wall. So now it's a good time to reiterate, this problem covers about a third of the United States Mexican border. Think about it this way. You're stuck living in an apartment with a messy roommate. So you decide to split the room down the middle. But he keeps leaving his stuff on your side, so you lay down some duct tape in the middle of the room. But, ugh, oh, you can't just run duct tape down the middle of the wall-mounted TV. So who gets it? Your roommate, who thinks you're kind of being a dick about this whole thing, doesn't want the duct tape solution at all, and definitely won't have you start building your cockamamie solution on his side, or you who is really married to the solution but will only do it if you get the TV. Meaning that you're going to be building the border on his side. Which, again, your roommate won't let you do. This is something to be paying attention to because... CBS News has learned the first 48 miles will go up in San Diego and along the Rio Grande at a cost of nearly a billion dollars. The solutions? Well, the main one, as acknowledged by our interior secretary, is not building the wall and relying on terrain and electronic surveillance to monitor the area. Or, of course, we could always pay Mexico for the wall, which, wow, talk about a 180 from a year ago. Again, this isn't an insurmountable problem, but if you have a strong feeling about the wall, you should definitely be paying attention during the Secretary of Interior confirmation hearings. Another big problem is private property, because despite your uncle's many, many Facebook posts, eight years of Obama didn't turn America into a communist nation. You know, for President Trump's border wall has been focused on cost, but what about the land needed that is not already owned by the government? One route could be the use of eminent domain, a legal measure President Trump promoted while he was a candidate on the campaign trail. Eminent domain is the federal government way of seizing private property for public purposes as long as just compensation is provided to the owners. Don't worry, the majority of these forced acquisitions are going on in Texas, 
a state notoriously chill about the government forcing people to do things they don't want to. Don't mess with Texas. Even worse, if they threaten to secede, where are we going to put that border wall? To put this problem in perspective, it's estimated that 5,000 different pieces of private property are going to need to be seized for this border wall. And of that, it's estimated that only 20% of landowners are willing participants. This is one area where this president excels though, being litigious. The president's budget that was put out last week included allocations for 20 lawyers to handle cases uh, just like yours over eminent domain. Are you prepared to do battle with government lawyers uh, to keep your property? Yep, we have a team of 20 lawyers dedicated to seizing private property for the border wall. Now it may seem like I'm poo-pooing this idea outright, because on the surface, the government forcing you to hand over your private property isn't exactly going to get a standing ovation from, well, any party. But I'll let Donald Trump handle this one. If you don't have eminent domain, you don't have roads, you don't have highways, you don't have any... Yes, just think about the highways and the... Um, uh, I mean, if we had to consider private ownership in building the border wall, our new border would look like a gerrymandered district. Oh, you want to sell your land to us? Well, according to this new border wall we're putting in, you now live in Mexico. If you think that's a joke, listen to one man's story, who I suspect Trump may be able to sympathize with. And yes, 15 of the 18 holes of the golf course will be uh, swallowed up and be on the south side, the wrong side of the wall. Now, that may sound like a bad thing, but forget sand traps, I want to be chipping my ball over the border wall. The way this would realistically work is the United States would buy all of this guy's land south of the border wall, which is 75% of his property. Building a border wall? Of course Trump will find a way to use that to acquire a new golf course. Or more realistically, two thirds of a golf course that's south of the border wall but still in the United States. Because the Rio Grande River really forces us to build our walls a ways into our side of the border. So in reality, that land sounds about as good an investment as Trump stakes, only sold at the sharper image, you know, right next to the USB cat hair trimmers. There are a few problems I'll take a second to give an honorable mention to. Opposition growing from environmentalists over the president's planned border wall. I think we all know why this isn't a top shelf issue for this administration. President Trump, you can't build a wall because it'll harm quite a few endangered species. You'd probably have more luck telling him that there's a planned parenthood in the way. Again though, the Department of Fish and Wildlife is under the control of the Secretary of the Interior. So if an environmentalist somehow got appointed to the job by Trump, maybe through a paperwork error, this could become an issue. Also, there's the obvious issue of just rugged terrain, because a wall on top of a cliff is a bit redundant. Most people who travel to Big Bend National Park, managed by the Department of the Interior, aren't looking at the majestic canyon carved by the Rio Grande River and thinking to themselves, you know what this needs? Just a big concrete wall. To sum this episode up, we're about to have a new member of the Department of the Interior go up for approval in the Senate, and his decisions are critical as to whether this border wall is happening. He'll be in charge of figuring out the problem with the Rio Grande River, seizing private property, most of which is in Texas, and judging whether to give merit to any environmental issues that may arise. While most people are focused on the budget, the overlooked power is the guy who gets to decide where the wall gets built. Or doesn't get built. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent nonpartisan comedy news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the right of my head. Or do it the old fashioned way by clicking the subscribe button below. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and remember to give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.